Hi, my name is Markus Müller and in the name of my co-authors, I welcome you to this presentation about our paper, a photorealistic terrain simulation pipeline for unstructured outdoor environments. Data has become increasingly important in many areas of robotics. It is essentially for the development and testing of a variety of different robotic methods and in particular important when it comes to neural networks. However, data is not always easily accessible. This is especially true in the case of planetary robotics. That's why researchers have investigated the possibility to synthesize the needed data. For the inter use case, there has been many progress in the development of simulators. For the outer use case, there exist simulators as well. However, they are usually more focused on structured or at least semi-structured environments and most of them are particularly designed for the autonomous driving use case. For unstructured environments and in particular for planetary environments, the amount of simulators which create photorealistic images is rather low. This is the reason why we developed OASIS, a simulation pipeline for unstructured outdoor environments based on Blender. OASIS can auto-generate different terrains and gives many semantic output options due to its material-based semantic labeling technique. Instead of just one, our simulator allows multiple levels of semantics. Furthermore, it provides instant segmentation information as well as other modalities. Although the simulator is mainly designed for planetary scenarios, many other outdoor scenes can be simulated with it and it is also extendable. Our simulator is freely available on GitHub. In this presentation, I will give you an overview of OASIS. But before we start, I show you how the simulator in principle works. First, a custom mesh is loaded which serves as fundamental landscape model and is called stage. This mesh is then randomly distorted. Oasis lets you add multiple stages, however for most use cases one stage should be enough. Next textures are merged together and are applied to the stage model. Furthermore objects like rocks are placed on the stage. After that the light setup is created and the sensors are placed in the scene. Once the entire scene is ready, the different render passes are rendered for all sensors, depending on your config file. In the default setup, this includes RGB and depth, multiple semantic segmentations and instant segmentation. Once the passes are rendered, a new sample for the batch is created, meaning that the sensor poses and light setup are adjusted accordingly to the config file. Whenever all samples are rendered for one batch, the next batch is prepared. In this case also the stage deformation and also the assets like materials and objects are updated. This procedure is continued until all batches are rendered. The behavior of the simulator can easily be adjusted with the config file. In the config file each main component has its own section. Each component has a general section for general parameters and a module section which lists all modules of the component which will be loaded. For the sensor setup that could be all sensors which are used in the scene. For the environment setup that might be all of the lights you want to use. Each module has then again two sections. The first one defines the type of the module and the second one the specific parameters of that module. Although OASIS comes with many modules, you can define your own custom module if needed. Later on, we will have a closer look in one of these config files. Now let's have a look into some of the main components of the simulator. We will have a closer look into the assets, environment effects, sensors and the render passes. There are three types of assets. Stages, which serve as the fundamental landscape mesh materials which will be applied onto the stage and last objects which will be placed on the stage. So for instance a material might be your terrain texture and as an object it might be rocks or trees. Let's have first a closer look onto the stage asset. 
The stage can be any custom mesh. However, in most cases, it will be the plane we provide with the simulator. This stage is now deformed with a noise texture. The type of noise texture, the limits of its size and intensity can be chosen via the config file and are randomly picked. To get an even more realistic landscape stage, Oasis can also make use of Blender's ANT, which lets you easily create a variety of different terrains. Next, we have a look at the materials. Oasis makes use of the physical based rendering short PBR materials to get the most photorealistic rendering results. There exists a huge amount of such textures on the web and there are also several web pages which provides you the textures for free. Furthermore, there are many tutorials online on how to create your own custom PBR textures. Instead of just applying the pure texture on the stage, you can choose to merge textures with each other. For that, you pick two textures, which each have a unique semantic label. Both textures are now merged together based on the values of a noise texture. The output is a merged material based on the two textures. Since the textures have unique labels and we know how they are merged, we also can preserve the semantic information. To get a hard assignment for one or the other semantic label, the label texture is processed with a threshold. This procedure can now be continued with the next unique texture. Since the noise is adapted for every batch, one gets random merges for the same textures. Let's have a look at the object assets. Some other simulators let you place objects based on a physical engine onto the surface. While this gives you a realistic and accurate placing result, it is in most cases not computationally feasible to place many objects onto the surface as needed in the outdoor case, like hundreds of objects or even thousands of objects. Therefore, Aces uses Blender's particle system which lets you create randomly modified copies of the same object and can place them fast onto the surface. Oasis lets you also place many objects with a certain direction, like these trees. Since our simulator is using the particle system, placing 10,000 of objects onto the stage is not a problem. Next, we will have a look how to set up lights with the environment effects. The user can choose between Blender Sky Texture or loading an HDRI as environment light. In the case of the HDRI, the user can provide a list of them from which the simulator picks random samples. Next, let's have a look into the sensors. The central part of the sensors is the base frame. All sensors are attached to it, as it would be for most robots in the real case as well. The movement of the sensors are defined over the base frame. There are two common movement types. The first one is to let the simulator randomly pick places in the simulation space restricted by a custom area. Here you also have the option to let the base frame face a target object, which is randomly sampled in the simulation space as well, or can also be sampled on the stage. The advantage of using a target object is that it can be easily ensured that the sensors are facing the underlying terrain. It is also possible to let the base frame hover with a certain distance over one of the stages. The second option is to let the base frame move accordingly to a custom CSV file. Oasis comes with one camera sensor, however it is possible to create your own custom sensors. Let's have now a closer look into one of the config files, in this case for a stereo camera setup. In the general section, you can define the movement behavior of the base frame. In the modular section, we add two camera sensors of the type sensor camera RGBD. In the specific section, you can choose the custom parameters for the camera. In this case, the sensor's name, the image resolution, its intrinsic parameters, the transformation to the base frame, and the trigger interval. 
An important section for the sensors is the render path section, which lets you activate for a given sensor a render path. In this case, we want to have for the left camera the RGB, depth and semantic passes turned on. However, for the right camera, we just want the RGB pass and one semantic segmentation pass activated. Next, we will have a look into the render passes. The simulator comes with four render passes, RGB, depth, semantic segmentation and instant segmentation. In the following, we will focus on the segmentation passes and give more information on how they are obtained. One option to get the segmentation information would be to use the object ID from Blender. This is the way how many simulators get their semantic map. The problem with that is that you can just get one semantic label for one object. In our case that would mean for instance that the entire state mesh gets assigned one single label and we cannot preserve the information of the different terrain materials of the stage. That's why we choose a different approach. Instead of using the object ID, we apply colors in form of a texture to each model, which represents their label ID encoded in RGB. With that, we can also apply multiple colors to different sections of the same object, like in our stage example. In order to do this, we first have to encode the label ID into RGB, which can be done with the here presented equations. However, to obtain the semantic map, we cannot just use the direct render output, since Blender does not render the pure color assignments, but try to render a realistic image based on the materials and light setup. That's why instead of using the final render output, we are using the direct diffuse channel output of Blender, which gives you the pure texture assignments of the objects before any physical light calculations. Due to this approach, the user cannot just have one semantic assignment to the assets, but also multiple ones. With that, it is possible to create multiple semantic segmentation maps. For each segmentation map, the label ID materials are loaded and then rendered. This can be in particular interesting if multiple researchers are interested into the same dataset, but would label the content differently. In the planetary use case, for instance, a robotic researcher who is more focused on the traversability of the robot will label the data set different compared to a geologist who is maybe more interested in recognizing the different rock types. To also get the instant segmentation map, OASIS uses now the object ID as label ID. We evaluated our simulator on three common robotic tasks. First, the use case of terrain segmentation, where we fine-tuned the neural network deep lab on simulated data from OASIS. Second, the task of state estimation, where we evaluated two state-of-the-art visual odometries with the data of our simulator. And last but not least, the task of instant segmentation. For this, we also refer to our IRIS workshop paper, which is presented on the ASRE21 workshop. Here we find you the Insta network with our simulator data. With that, I hope I was able to give you a short introduction into OASIS, got you interested into building your own wonder world. You can get the repository over here. And thank you very much for your attention.